Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 33 with the last exhibition match for tonight. It's going to be Drone versus El Torero, which should hopefully be a much more even match than the ones we've been seeing so far. We're going to be on Baron as well, which I don't remember if I've actually shown off before. Well, let's go over briefly before the game starts. So, we have start location in the southeast, start location in the northwest. Four medley structures pretty easily available, though two of them are right next to a mountain in both cases. And little valley here that's a bit hard to break with some of the lower area in the northeast and southwest, which obviously is a few mexes, and not a bad way of getting around the center trench with some high ground to defend against it. So pretty simple, straightforward map, but some raiding paths along the east side and the west side are things to keep an eye on. Let's start the game. The drone going to be starting with a jump bot factory right away. It's unlike him, instead of going for amphib plant. I think he might have not wanting to play Amphib anymore. I think I read something about that. So, sorry, El Torero is going for Jump Bot. What am I saying? Drone is, in fact, going for Amph. I was looking at the wrong player. Sorry, El Torero is the one going for Jumps. Drone going for Amph. This is... Okay, this night may have not been a night of bizarre morphs like Saturday, but it's certainly one of bizarre matchups, or at least unexpected ones, which I think is heartening, because there's been a lot of effort gone into balancing the lesser-used factories, like Jump Bots and... Actually, not so much Amphib. Amphib was tweaked a bit less recently, but... Jump Pots and Spiders in the more recent balance experiments. And we are seeing them used a decent amount. To varying degrees of success, but still, they are being used. Anyway, Drone starting out with a conch. Seems to like to go for that. I'm a little bit surprised he's doing that on this map. Not very surprised. I mean, clearly he doesn't want... He has his commander, Beam Laser, E-Cell. Still sticking with that. Still wants to have the early energy. Doesn't want to have to build his power structures. And getting defense turrets just in case for whatever comes in, which will be a pyro, and that's that's going to be able to da do some damage. Not a huge amount. It might be able to get rid of the Lotus, but the Lotus is going to be healing before then. So basically, that pyro is not going to do too much. El Torero, not in a sorry, El Torero is not going to be in a great spot for harassment. However, angled right, it actually might work. Actually, no, it will work because that conch is not repairing the Lotus, and the Lotus, though, however, not on fire. The conch is the thing being being damaged. Not a bad choice, mind you. I don't think the Conch is going to burn to death in the meantime, but the Pyro does get out of there. A second Pyro coming in. This Pyro looks like it's going to retreat all the way back home. Yep, retreating all the way to the Commander to get healed up. And the second Pyro to replace it. While El Torero builds up a bunch of puppies. Now, bear in mind, on this map, there's only energy reclaim. There's no built-in metal reclaim. So the puppies can't just have a bunch of free reclaim once again. And... I never thought I'd see this. This is the first time I've seen water against fire. And apparently fire wins. Zero K takes place in a very bizarre universe indeed. Fire is super effective against water. Everything Pokemon taught me is wrong. Very, very wrong. I feel lied to. Either that or Zero K is wrong. I'm not quite sure which. I don't know what to do if my house is on water. Oh well, I'll just burn that bridge when it comes to it. Anyway, in the meantime, El Torero is actually doing a very nice job expanding on the east side. Drone as well expanding on the west side. Both players matching each other's expansions, mechs for mechs, pretty well. Though El Torero is being more bold. He is going towards the center. Drone taking one of the high ground mechs is first. So I think El Torero is going to have a harder time holding this, but if he manages to, he's actually got this set of expansions as well. Those are his if he manages to hold this metal extractor. This duck is going to take that out. The duck is going to one-shot the metal extractor, though. He needs to still hold this area. That metal extractor is down, but the duck is also down. There it goes. Pyro's getting rid of that without issue. The archers, however, going around, going to get rid of yet another metal extractor before the pyros get to them. Oh, sorry, a duck is getting rid of that. El Toro not quite holding this area. I'd say that this northeast side is no longer easily his, and he's actually starting to fall behind an economy. Drone with 15 metal, El Torero with 10 this is not the best time to be El Torero. Rather unfortunate for him, but it does mean that... Well... Actually, Drone isn't doing too well, I'd say. Comparatively speaking, El Torero is not doing too badly. El Torero did manage to retake that mech. He is retaking this mechs up here. I'm not quite sure entirely that he still has these northeast mechs, but at this point I'm a bit more confident. And the power are going to finish off this duck. Needs to jump! Needs to jump! No, didn't jump in time. Not that it matters. It still lives and it can be repaired. Now, where is... Okay, two ducks coming in to 
El Torero's base. That is... That's going to be a problem. This Pyro is not going to be able to survive against them. It's going to get one... Well, the two of them together will one-shot the Pyro. However, they are not quite in range yet. They will, however, get rid of the Freaker. That Freaker is... Oh, not quite going to die. Oh, okay. Well, it didn't quite die. It nearly dodged the missiles. Nicely done. Nice jump there. That's where Jump Micro comes in. It's not quite perfect, but at least it minimizes the damage. And El Torero still behind in terms of economy. Right now, it looks like just a matter of overdrive at this point that's giving Drone that slight boost. A little hard to say, though, because Drone... No, that is definitely giving the boost. In fact, without overdrive, El Torero and Drone are even on economy, or very close to. Oh, never mind. Let's reclaim on El Torero's part. So, yeah, it's... It is definitely an advantage to drone right now. But El Torero is doing a pretty good job trying to get rid of the ducks. However, the ducks are doing a great job getting rid of the metal extractors. And drone has expanded over to the southwest side of the map. El Torero's only choice is to expand on the north side, which is kind of hard to do. That being said, it's open. El Torero can take it pretty much any time. He's got to be able to defend it, though. That's the tough part. The biggest tough part is that drone can keep piercing in here. And it's kind of tricky for El Torero to have enough units in place right where the ducks are. Because one duck gets in, and that's it. All these, all of these metal extractors are dead. Except maybe the one around the Lotus. Two ducks and the Lotus is dead, and then everything else is dead afterwards. So El Toro has to be very careful here. However, he is taking the north. He is going to be moving in from there. Actually, no. He and Drone are competing for the north now, or the northeast. But Drone has solidly taken the southwest, or at least his commander's there. Hasn't actually built any defenses in it, though. El Toro could harass that. He could pretty easily harass this ridge, especially if he starts from here. Don't start from the trench. Go around the side. Uh, admittedly, it's kind of tricky given the position of Drone. Given that Drone now has radar on that area, that's pretty much impossible. But now Drone does have radar on the area, so you can see what's going on. El Torero has radar of a bit more. So both players are well aware of what happens on the middle strip. The middle... Horizontally middle of the map. But they aren't going to be quite so well equipped when it comes to each other's respective sides. However, El Torero is pushing a pretty strong army here. This boy... Being mildly annoying, but nice dodge... Well, she's not even dodge marker. That's just the fight command from the looks of it. Actually, I'm not sure of that. No, that... No, that's just the fight command. If it weren't El Torero, we'd see a selection on them. But still, they are... The Pyros are getting out of the way, and... That is actually not a bad harassment there. Although, at this point, Drone is going... Sorry, El Torero is going in the wrong direction. He should be going southwest. He's going northeast. He, well, okay, the wrong direction to harass. The right direction to protect. He's clearly trying to avoid getting counterattacked at the northwest side of the map. Sorry, northeast side of the map. And Drone is not aware of this necessarily. He might be aware of this because of the conch. But he's not aware of this because of radar or line of sight. And actually, well, Ultra are doing a nice job getting rid of these boys one at a time, but very effectively nonetheless. Drone is losing a lot of these boys and losing more mexes. El Torero is just bearing down on his main base. Nothing else is really happening in the map right now. I think the south... El Torero's, sorry, El Torero's no threat from Drone's commander right now, but Drone is taking a lot of damage here. Scallops finishing off the Pyros, however, that is really the thing to do. I'm not sure there's a Pyro morph right now that would help. No, Pyros do not morph. However, not a bad job here. Burning up the Caretaker to at least limit the amount of damage that can be done. Limit the rate at which units can be built. And setting everything on fire, which not the most useful right now, is still kind of handy. At the very least, it does slow Drone down somewhat. Though El Torero lost his entire army in the process, he is rebuilding, he is getting more Pyros. He's actually starting to... He's starting to excess. Mostly because he's moving one of these figures off to claim more of the center of the map. Not a bad idea, setting up some defenses as well, getting a nice front line, and trying to get himself into an economic advantage position, and it's really a matter of the fact that El Torero did throw a bunch of reclaim material into Drone's base. So, that's Drone's. That's Drone until El Toro, if he wins the game, wins the game. That's the only way it's going to go away. And El Toro now just morphing his commander. And it is Particle Beam Auto Repair. So much more battle focused. Whereas Drone, Beam Laser e cell It's going to get rid of this Freaker without too much issue. Especially with that Lotus there. That's going to help out a lot. However, in the north, the Scallops having to retreat from El Toro's commander. The Pyros, however, have to retreat from the Scallops. The Scallops really just counted them. They counted them outright. And now more puppies coming in. Given that reclaim fields are a thing, though admittedly most of them belonging to Drone at the moment, there is a possibility, but this boy is going to go down. Nothing can be done about it unless these scallops move in, and they were out of position, so that boy is... That's a free kill on the boy. El Toro needs to get out of there and just... Wait until he gets his jump back at the very least, but right now, just needs to get out of there. Does have... Actually, 
Well, his commander's not in a bad spot. Can he get rid of a scallop? Or possibly. Not quite. Not quite getting rid of the scallop. The pyro's, like I said, not the best choice. Puppies are not a terrible choice. But even then, puppies don't really distract the scallops that much. Because they have a shotgun, they have an area weapon. That is not going to work. And Drone at this point trying to do what he can to counter what El Toro has. The scallops are the best choice, I'd say. The scallops are really a good choice against those pyros. Going for more boys as well, though. Wants to tank that out, but Pyro's coming in. Gonna get rid of Drone's Commander. I think Drone's Commander is just one more jump in, and that is the Commander down. So right now, El Torero has every advantage in the game. I think Drone might go for one last shot with these scallops. I mean, the Pyro's can't easily counter it. He's gonna go for one last hurrah with this, and if that doesn't work, that's probably gonna be game. But even at this point, Drone... He has territory, he has economy, but he's not got a lot to counter with against the Pyro Factory. So, I mean, sorry, the Jump Jet Factory. Oh, wow. Bit of a Freudian slip there. Yes, admittedly, it is in practice, oftentimes, the Pyro Factory. But now there's moderators and placeholders and puppies. There's not just Pyros anymore. It's not just for Pyros anymore. But yeah, historically it was, so. I suppose that makes sense with the Freudian slip there. But yeah, the Pyros are actually, even in large enough numbers, against one Scallop, doing pretty well. The Scallops will only be in numbers to work on this, and El Torero has nicely consolidated this Northeast. He's going to lose it, but it's going to take a little while, and at this point, El Torero, well, it comes down to what he builds. How many puppies does he have, by the way? That's what I want to know. How many puppies does this guy have? I think he has zero. Yeah, he's just got Pyro's, never mind. He's got no puppies. Just going for pure Pyro. Which in large numbers can get rid of the Scallops, but I think the Scallops... The Scallops scale a lot better. Not even I think. The Scallops do scale a lot better. We saw that earlier. But Ultraro's commander just... Attacking in the north. At level 2 with two advanced targeting systems. That's range boost. So, that's his attack range right now. It's currently... 396, which isn't especially good. But, hey, that's not bad for a light particle beam. And... Admittedly, the boy with 450 is still able to get past it. No, he's jumping into... No, he's jumping away from combat. Never mind. C kind of misread that. But yes, he is getting out of there. El Torero just keeping his commander alive. He did lose his medal extract. He needs to rebuild those. Because right now, Drone is a massive economic advantage. The Amphib plant isn't working too well, but if he does Fax Switch, that could be devastating. Especially if Fax Switch to Air Plant into Shadows to get rid of the, pyro the Jump Jet Factory... That would probably finish them off. And also, the Pyros being the kind of units they are, having Shadows get rid of them one at a time would be quite effective. And now we see a level 3 morph is coming for El Torero's commander. Not sure what that's going to entail, but it's... He clearly thinks he's ahead at this point. And admittedly, he's actually kind of behind, except for the fact that the Pyros are giving him a massive advantage. And now his commander is... Well, nearly done morphing. Has to push out these boys, but these boys are pretty tough. Everything being done that can be done to get rid of them, but still, the boys are fairly tough, and El Toro's commander just about to get level 3. It is however taking a lot of damage, getting out of the fight. Good plan, get out of that combat, because that's not going to work. And level 3, more advanced target systems and concussion shot D-gun. So, not bad anti-riot, and now with a range of, well, 462 for his main weapon. That actually does beat the boy now, so at this point El Torero can kite those boys no problem. Not to mention just knocking them out with a concussion shot no, without too much issue either, but that's a timed manual fire thing. However, Drone is doing what he can to take the territory. He has a lot of territory here. He's... That's all he really has, though. A lot of territory, a lot of static defense. He does have a gunship switch going on. Hasn't actually spent in it yet. Both players are floating a lot, in fact. El Torero does have most of his economy being pushed into his factory, though, so he's slowly but surely not floating. However, at this point, Drone now getting Banshee. Going for a Banshee switch, which is kind of an interesting choice against Jump Jet, but I guess he's expecting the Archangel just going to come up, would finish off any Brawlers or Black Dawns he builds. So instead of going for a dozen Banshees and working from there. A little bit tricky, though, because Defenders aren't that easy to get through with Banshees, and neither are Lotuses. Actually, the Lotus is the bigger threat. But at this point, Drone is doing everything he can to get himself back in the game. Massive economic advantage, and really, he is building stores just to 
put it somewhere. Just to avoid floating too much while he reclaims. That's how much of an economic advantage he has right now. Needing more caretakers, though, that's the biggest thing to do. That's what you really need to do. And now we're starting to see puppies from El Torero. He's going to be able to get through some reclaim fields. And also, he's in Salt getting rid of the units over to the northeast side of the map. That... Well, that's one less conquest for Drone right now. And Drone actually does... Oh, actually fall a bit short now, it looks like, on Metal. 27, he has no Reclaim right now, so he's only got 27 Metal, admittedly, against 15. So he's ahead. He is still ahead of El Torero right now. But, yeah, the Banshee switch, I'm not entirely sure about. A Black Dawn is following it up. I'm really not sure about this. Black Dawns have a weird accuracy issue. And unfortunately, a free shot on the Banshee's... Ha setting two of them to half health. That really was unnecessary, but... Same time, Jack coming in here to try to break the defenses. Not going to be able to do so successfully, but... Going to be able to give it a good shot. And... Still actually going to be able to take care of quite a lot in the meantime. In fact, no, he is going to be able to deal with this. Or just barely, it's... No, this defender not able to finish it off, and the Banshee will. These two Banshees will be able to finish it off. The rest of the Banshees, however... Not quite so much luxury, they are completely exposed. And to point out, of course, once again, puppies can hit air. So these Banshees, when they go to attack, if they hit those puppies, they're dead. They are very dead. Like, there is no getting through those through those puppies. Those puppies are just going to kill off the Banshees. And puppies don't overkill, by the way. If they miss because the unit is no longer there, they remain puppies. They do not die. But it looks like the Banshees just avoid that entirely. The Black Dawn trying to get rid of the puppies instead. Trying to get rid of the commander instead. The puppies just happen to be there. Banshee's doing some harassment. Not bad harassment. The Pyro's able, after the defenses are broken, to take out the southwest. The Banshee's trying to take out the northeast somewhat from El Torero, but once these puppies catch up, those Banshees are gone. And the puppies, as they're catching up, of course, are reproducing. There's currently 39 of them. Reproducing whether or not they like to, but... The Black Dawn doing what it can, which isn't actually that much. Like I said, accuracy on the Black Dawn is not its strong point, especially when you're dealing with recon comms. This is just very tough. Another Black Dawn is on the way, but the first one's gone down. And the puppies... Where are those Banshees? I feel like I just missed them all die. Nope, I didn't miss them all die. They're, they've got to be alive somewhere. There they are. Banshees in the center of the map. A bunch of them have taken damage, but... They're not dead. They avoided the puppies for the most part. And the Black Dawn is going to have a slightly harder time with this. Going to be able to avoid the puppy, no problem. But still... Still in a tight spot. Like I said, bombers probably wouldn't have been the better option. Airplant and Bomber would have been Jump Off Factory dead. Commander dead. Commander's at 2,800 health, which means... Like, I think... Six Bomber? No. Five Bombers would kill it. Actually, no. 800 damage each. No, no. Actually, more like... More like four. Four Bombers would have finished it off, I think. Well, assuming they all hit. But yeah, Pyro is just avoiding the Black Dons and... Burning them all to death. I mean, there's not much the Black Dons can easily do. They have very, very low rate of fire. They aren't that accurate. All the but one of the Pyros is gone, however. At this point, El Torero has a massive military advantage, and Drone's economic advantage has been lost. I also point out one of the downsides of storage is that it does store metal and energy, and you need to be accessing energy in order for overdrive to work. So at this point, Drone's overdrive has just now kicked in again, getting him... Massive metal income, but it just kicked in because of the storage. And that does not help. But yeah, Drone right now is just not going to... I think he's going to throw in the towel pretty soon. I mean, the game was kind of called when he lost those scallops, but... At this point, these puppies just moving along. 55 of them so far, and that's going to be the end of it. That's going to finish this off. Well, at least this wasn't a complete curb stomp. I mean... It's a two, it's 150 elo difference, but this has turned out to be a fairly even game. In fact, if anything, it's been in favor of El Torero. Though at this point, these players, they really are pretty evenly matched regardless, so it's not that big of a deal. But Drone is one of the better players in 0k. I mean, he did get second in the first 1v1 tournament, and I think both 1v1 tournaments, actually. He got second in both. Once to Goda and once to Randy. However, in this case, El Torero appears to have gotten better from the Amphib plant. Still apparently not quite in the best position, at least to deal with jump bots. But hey, at least we got to see this matchup, because it was an interesting matchup. Grizzly being built up, last ditch attempt by Drone to just get himself back in the game. It might 
have some chance, but it's not it's not gonna be easy. Of course, Grizzlies the puppies are the problem, that's the thing. The puppies have no real have no real weakness to the Grizzly, and it doesn't matter. Drone realizes this is not gonna work out and throws in the towel. That is game. And that is going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. And thank you all for watching. And have a good night.